was a kid, uh, <clears throat> like many kids growing up, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. And uh, in this picture, that's me on the bike at about age five. And in the middle is my aunt. Uh, she was a special play friend of mine, at, and I think she's about 12 there at my grandparents' place. And on the right is my grandfather, and uh, I was very close to both of them. In, uh, when I was 18, my grandfather got cancer, and I spent a lot of time with him at home as he was dying. And it was a deeply uh, moving and saddening experience for me. It, it left a deep impression on me, le lasted a long time. And about 10 years ago, uh, my aunt died of cancer, and she was only in her 40s. <clears throat> I just couldn't get over how unfair it was. It just didn't seem, it was so random. And I wondered who in my own family would be next. Um, it inspired me to want to know more about cancer. And I'm a big picture thinker. Uh, I like to see the forest before the trees. But when I started to learn about cancer, I found myself deep in the woods. Only trees. The, the, the literature, the cancer research literature is so vast and so technical, it's like learning a new language. Now my background's in aerospace engineering, and, I, and the more I studied it, the more frustrated I became that I couldn't understand it. Uh, I became obsessed with it, frankly. I spent, uh, I would get up in the morning, sometimes uh, before the light of dawn. I would do two or three hours before breakfast. I would study it over my lunch hour, sometimes stay up past midnight working on it. And um, I, I had no idea what I had taken on, but I was convinced that I was going to understand the science of cancer. I wanted to be able to pick up research and understand what I was reading, and I couldn't. It took me eight years to figure it out, just so I, could, just so I understood it well enough to see the big picture. And what I discovered in that time was that there are two major problems that, were go that had gone unresolved for a long time. The first one is about the kinds of, uh, it's a related to the cause of cancer, and it's really related to the kinds of chemicals that people have always been concerned about. Things in your shopping cart, uh, pesticides, food additives, uh, chemicals in your personal care products. We've dismissed these for the last 30 years. So focus has mainly been on lifestyle factors. But the fact is, um, scientists now know, they actually understand the science of cancer quite well. We've spent a lot of money to, to understand the disease, and we've actually got a good handle on what happens. What we know is that cancer is a, when a series of disrupted mechanisms or pathways allow cells to multiply uncontrollably. And we know that chemicals can act very precisely on these pathways. That's the basis of many of our therapies. So the question is, can a chronic exposure to a mixture of chemicals that we're exposed to on an ongoing day-to-day -day basis at low doses act precisely on all of those mechanisms in combination to help cause cancer, effectively increase our chances of getting the disease? And while that may seem like a very simple question that we should already know the answer to, the fact is, we don't know. Uh, while people will assure you that various chemicals are safe, we've spent the last, excuse me, we spent the last 10 to 20 years testing chemicals one at a time. And what we look for is to find out whether or not those chemicals individually cause cancer. We study them in animals. We look at, we, our interest is in knowing whether or not they cause cancer or not. And if they don't, and most do not, then the chemical industry is free to use those chemicals in all kinds of, promote them for uses in all kinds of ways. And we end up with a cocktail of chemicals in our bodies. Now, science of cancer has come a long way, and this isn't something that's beyond the grasp of the researchers. They've just never organized themselves to solve this problem because for a long time we didn't have the tools to do it. The second major problem that I could see as an observer, really, these aren't my insights. These are things that I saw were scientists in the literature who were complaining about that hadn't been solved. The second major problem that I could see was therapy. There was a problem with therapy. Uh, what scientists have been doing is they've been using the fact that the, we understand the mechanisms of cancer quite well to develop therapies that target very precise mechanisms. And their hope is that by targeting exactly the mechanisms that matter in any in cancer, we'll be able to stop the cells that are multiplying out of control. The problem is, is that most cancers don't just contain one type of cell. They're actually self-mutating. So there's actually numerous subpopulations of cells in any given cancer type. And in this little cartoon that I show here, on the left, you'll see a, a mixture of cells of different colors. And a targeted therapy might get at one group of cells, in this case, the white group. Um, and but it's those, and in fact, somebody who was treated with a targeted therapy may seem like they got better. Their, their tumors will shrink, they'll come home, everybody will think they're fine, and then suddenly the cancer is back. Because what happened, those other cells that that therapy didn't get at will actually 
come back, create more cancer, and sometimes spread to other parts of the body, and by that time, it's very difficult to treat because those cells weren't operating by the same mechanisms and they're not responsive to the same kind of therapy. Doctors have been trying to deal with this kind of heterogeneity of cancer cell types by using combinations of chemicals that they have that have been approved for use in cancer, but they're so toxic that they can only combine a few types of chemicals in any given application. Uh, they just don't, are limited in what they can do. Now, at the same time, in the last decade, scientists have actually come up with, they've discovered all kinds of chemicals that appear to be quite non-toxic that are in plants and foods and other natural compounds that get at these very same mechanisms and they look like they'd be perfect for a broad spectrum approach that targeted many mechanisms simultaneously. But guess what? You can't patent those chemicals and the pharmaceutical industry is responsible for development and there's no money in those chemicals. So frankly, the system has been failing us. I started calling scientists. I, I, I have no credentials and no standing. I'm nobody. Uh, I just started calling scientists. I emailed scientists and I started asking these questions. And I, I, I was just reporting what I had read in the literature. Other scientists were frustrated over these issues. And eventually one scientist agreed to help me. And with his help, something really remarkable has happened. We started an NGO uh, called Getting to Know Cancer. And our goal was to in inspire some new research to answer these two problems. We started contacting scientists that had been complaining about the fact that these problems hadn't been addressed. And within just a few weeks, we had 38 scientists who had put their hand up to say, we'll help you, and they were on our advisory board. We stood up a website for this initiative, and we contacted the 20 top cancer journals in the world, and we said, this is what we want to do, and we got an outstanding response. In fact, we organized two special jur uh, journal articles, two special issues of two uh, world-class cancer journals, uh, so we could organize around this and bring the scientists together, together to solve these two problems. From there, we, put, we wanted to crowdsource the solution, and we actually got 700 scientists who signed up and said that they would help us. We picked leaders from that group, 24 leaders, and we put them in two separate task forces. We asked them to organize their own teams, and now we've got 350 scientists from 31 countries organized on a year-long project to solve these, to tackle these two very challenging issues. As you can imagine, for me, this has been an incredible process, and I wanted to share it with you because I wanted you to see that I think this, this, what I've learned in this process is applicable to any problem. First thing I have to say is don't be daunted by problems that are complex. Don't be afraid to take them on. Ask for help. Be a fearless learner. People, I, these scientists have been incredibly set receptive and they've all been very helpful. And at, find people that are critical of the way things are being done that can see the problems that need to be fixed and use your strengths to help them. Cancer has been the common enemy for far too long. But when we work together to solve problems, the impossible becomes possible. And nothing, and I mean nothing, should stand in our way. Thank you. <laughs>